Good morning, everyone. So today we will be discussing tetralogy of fallow. As you all know, tetralogy of fallow is one of the commonest cyanotic congenital heart disease that you encounter in children. And we'll be discussing based on the 2020 guidelines published in the Indian Pediatrics. So as you all know, uh, tetralogy of fallow is a cyanotic heart disease causing a right to left shunt, which essentially means that it is a body to body shunt. That means here the blood that is returning to the right side of the heart instead of going to the lungs to get oxygenated, goes to the back to the body uh, through the iota. So that is why you have a right to left shunt. So what is the company, what are the components of tetralogy of fallow? As the name suggests, there are four things, but essentially it is a duality. So the two most important components is right ventricular outflow tract obstruction that is in the form of a pulmonary stenosis or a pulmonary atresia. And also you have a non-restrictive VSD. So when you have a right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, the right side of the ventricle or the right ventricle has to pump against a resistance leading on to right ventricular hypertrophy. And because you, you know that the pulmonary artery and the iota um, both originate from the single corners, and since the pulmonary artery here is narrow and the iota comes to overlie the VSD, leading on to the iota starts receiving blood both from the right ventricle and also from the left ventricle. So that is the fourth component that is overriding of iota. So you can see here, because there is decreased pulmonary blood flow, uh, because there is pulmonary stenosis, there will be diminished pulmonary blood flow. And also at the level of VSD, the shunt is right to left. As we already said, iota is receiving blood both from the right ventricle as well as from the left ventricle. And <clears throat> There is an ejection systolic murmur because of the flow across the pulmonary valve. Remember, the duration of the ejection systolic murmur is inversely related to the severity of pulmonary stenosis. If the pulmonary stenosis is very severe, it will be very short duration. If it is a mild or moderate stenosis, the ejection systolic murmur would be of a longer duration. And because the pulmonary valve is abnormal, the P2 is soft, often the P2 is not heard. On top of that, because the pulmonary valve takes a longer time to close, so P2 is often delayed, but clinically you will be hearing only a single sound and that single sound is A2. So what are the clinical features? The clinical features are cyanosis, often patients present with cyanotic spell or anoxic spell, that is paroxysmal attacks of dyspnea with increased cyanosis. Older children will complain of dyspnea on exertion, or exercise intolerance, and they would often say that after playing or running, the baby would squat. The squatting episodes are common in an older child, whereas a small baby just presents to you with a cyanotic spell. Clinical examination, there would be cyanosis and clubbing. Precordium is usually normal. JVP may be seen, and JVP A wave may be prominent in some. In small children, it is very difficult to make out. There is and on auscultation, S1 is normal, S2 appears single, and what you hear, as I said, is mainly A2. The pulmonary area that is on the left parasternal area, you can see here the ejection systolic murmur. And as we already said, the duration of ESM is inversely related to the uh, severity of pulmonary stenosis. And because iota is large and receiving blood both from the right and left ventricle, often ejection clicks are also heard. Now, what is the finding, the chest x-ray that you're going to see? As you can see here, because of the decrease, because uh, you can see the heart size is normal. There is no cardiomegaly. Because of decreased pulmonary blood flow, there are oligemic lung feeds. The lung is looking more black in color. And because your pulmonary artery is narrow, the con there is a concave pulmonary artery segment. And iota appears large. And because there is RVH, you have seen an RV apex or upturned um, apex leading, giving you the classical uh, shape of a boot. So that is a description of a chest x-ray finding in case of tetralogy of fallow. What happens in ECG? In ECG, as expected, it is going to show a right ventricular hypertrophy, which would be manifested as right axis deviation. And you can see in V2 and V2, you're having tall... Uh, R waves, S waves are not seen. So mainly it is the R wave that is prominent. And also you have inverted T waves, which denote a strain right ventricular hypertrophy because of pressure overload. 
and v5 and v6 you can see that the r is not that much prominent s is more prominent so this all this together tells you that ecg has evidence of right ventricular hypertrophy what are the complications you can have cyanotic spell infective endocarditis cyanosis causing polycythemia leading on to decreased sluggish blood flow causing venous thrombosis especially cerebral venous thrombosis there may be paradoxical embolism in the brain because substances that is returning back to the right side of the lung instead of uh, right side of the heart instead of getting filtered in the lung is going directly towards the left side so you can have paradoxical embolism these leading on to stroke like episodes and these sites of infarction can get secondarily infected also leading on to brain abscess then the classical uh, symptom that we describe in a small baby is definitely cyanotic spell now what is the cyanotic spell what really happens is that babies after waking up the child starts crying or exerting for passing stools the child becomes dyspneic and when the child becomes uh, dyspneic the later cyanosis deepens and as the cyanosis deepens there may be loss of consciousness or seizures so what exactly happens here when the baby is sleeping the respiratory center is used to a higher level of oxygen when the baby wakes up cries or strains for a defecation there is a re increased requirement of oxygen leading on to fall in spo2 whenever there is a fall in spo2 immediately your brain uh, center is stimulated and the brain starts giving you instruction to breathe faster but when there is a tachypnea the oxygen requirement is again increased to meet the demand of increase in respiratory rate leading on to deepening of cyanosis when there is cyanosis the cyanosis will cause anaerobic metabolism leading on to accumulation of lactic acid in the tissues this lactic acid will cause acidosis and this acidosis will cause decrease in systemic vascular resistance remember acidosis is a vasodilator anything that causes reduction in systemic vascular resistance that means the blood finds it easy to the flow from the right side to the left side because left side the pressure has decreased the shunt worsens so if someone ask you the main pathophysiology behind the cyanotic spell the answer should be it is mainly a fall in systemic vascular resistance so that is the reason when you do a management most of the things that you do you are trying to increase the systemic vascular resistance so the moment you present a baby with a cyanotic spell remember newborns it is unlikely to present with a cyanotic spell because newborns sleep most of the time newborns have a higher concentration of hemoglobin f and the pulmonary stenosis usually progresses over time so these are some of the reasons why newborns usually don't present with a spell they may rarely mostly it is the post newborn period so whenever you have a baby with a deepening cyanosis by becoming progressively lethargic immediately put the baby in the knee chest position and provide high flow oxygen preferably with a non rebreathing mask the knee chest position by kinking the aorta increases the um, uh, by kinking the femoral artery it is causing increase in systemic vascular resistance as well as because you are kinking the femoral vein there is also decreased venous return and there is also compression of the splanchnic circulation then the next thing that you do is you give morphine 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kg im even ketamine can be given for this what will it this do this will calm down the baby morphine also causes pulmonary vasodilatation morphine releases the spasm that happens at the level of the pulmonary valve and most importantly morphine calms down the baby so once the baby stops crying once the baby calms down naturally the oxygen requirement comes down the next if it still doesn't improve go ahead and give a normal saline bolus 10 ml per kg to increase the systemic vascular resistance and diminish the shunt if it still doesn't work then give a beta blocker you can use propranolol or metoprolol in the dose of 0.1 mg per kg or even esmolol can be given whenever you're giving a beta blockers the heart rate comes down and when the heart rate comes down the diastolic filling is better the cyanosis decreases if the patient is still not improving go ahead and give a sodium bicarbonate 1 to 2 ml per kg soda bicarbonate will neutralize the acidosis which was happening because of the lactic acid accumulation in the tissues and as the acidosis is neutralized the svr improves if it is still not responding then injection phenylephrin may be given 5 to 10 microgram per kg slow iv over 5 minutes if the patient is not improving phenylephrin may be repeated after 20 minutes in the same dosage and even uh, noradrenaline can be given as an infusion because both phenylephrin and 
noradrenaline will cause increase in the systemic vascular resistance thus helping you to abolish a cyanotic spell if all this doesn't work then the thing that you can do is go ahead intubate and ventilate remember here the baby is not going to be greatly benefited by ventilation because the problem here is inside the heart and not exactly inside the lung but when you are ventilating you are able to sedate the patient if needed you are able to paralyze the patient that way you are taking away the increased oxygen requirement so that is the main thing that you are able to do when you are ventilating that is decreasing the oxygen requirement of the baby while providing a high fio2 and remember if this doesn't work or even before always keep your surgeon in the loop because surgeon can take up at any time the baby any refractory spell should be taken up for emergency surgery and at least a shunt surgery should be done So, what is the medical therapy that you are going to give to prevent the cyanotic spell? Maintain the hemoglobin above fourteen gram per deciliter. Anemia favors decreases the deformability of the RBC. So, maintain HB above fourteen gram per deciliter. They can carry more oxygen also. Beta blocker. Give beta blocker at the highest tolerated dose, that is one to four mg per kg per day. This would often prevent recurrent cyanotic spell. But the ultimate intervention is definitely surgery. Surgery. You have two kinds of surgery. That is, you have a shunt surgery and a complete corrective surgery or complete intracardiac repair. In a shunt surgery, it is a palliative surgery. That means what you are trying to do is you are putting a conduit, a connection between the pulmonary artery and the Iota either mostly through the subclavian artery. This would help the blood from the um, subclavian artery to go to the pulmonary artery, and the lung gets perfused better. So more oxygenated blood will come back to the left side of the heart. So this is mainly a palliative surgery. Various kinds of various types or various types of shunt surgery are described, but the most common one is the modified Blalock toxic shunt that is commonly done. and in case of a complete intracardiac surgery you are going to close the vsd you are going to repair the pulmonary stenosis and that way you are doing a complete correction there when do you do these things if your child has minimal cyanosis you need to do a total correction between 1 to 2 years of age whereas if your patient is having a cyanosis uh, saturation less than 70% with recurrent spell and if the baby is less than 3 months let them take up for a shunt if the baby is more than 3 months depending upon the expertise of the surgical team they may decide on a surgery on a surgery or a shunt but in in case the child with a tetralogy of fallow instead of having a pulmonary stenosis is having a pulmonary atresia especially with a bad pulmonary artery then in which a conduit is needed in that case we will have to delay a surgery for a while that is at least 3 to 4 years of age so that was all for today's discussion on tetralogy of fallow thank you